Maybe someday I'll read a fantasy series like this in the correct order and know everything that's connected to it beforehand instead of just jumping into it blindly. Then again, maybe not. Hi guys, it's April, and I'm going to do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I'm gonna have the non spoilery section up front, followed by the spoiled filled dump afterwards, so that way I can let you know when that will happen in case you don't wanna spoil yourself. But if you like spoilers, feel free to stick around. So The Harp of Kings by Juliette Merlier is book number one in her Warrior Bar series. This tells the story of Leoben and Brock, her brother, who are training to be warriors on Swan Island. It is also the story of Dayu, another one of the warriors in training. These three trainees are given a chance to go on a real mission when the Harp of Kings goes missing. Their job is to find out who could have taken this harp and return it before the new king is to be coronated. Much like Juliette Merlier's other works, this series takes place in Ireland, so it has a lot of the Celtic folklore and storytelling and belief systems. And I will also note that this series is technically a continuation of the Blackthorn and Grimm's series. This is the next generation after that series, which I did not know going into this book until I was partway through and I started seeing some weird references to other series by Julia Merlier, and so I started to do some digging. So this is directly after Blackthorn and Grimm, but it also has hints to other series by Julia Merlier. However, you do not need to have any of that backstory to jump into this one, which I was very thankful for because I have a habit of picking up big fantasy books like this, not knowing that they're connected to something else, and just diving right in. And a lot of the explanations and the storytelling doesn't leave you feeling confused, which I very much appreciated. This story is also written in Juliette Merlier's beautiful writing style. She never disappoints me. She builds up strong female characters. She has a way of building up character development through story arc and folklore and mythology in such a beautiful fashion, which is why I absolutely love her work. In this story, you have a lot of druid lore, you have a lot of fey lore, and you also have bardic tellings. Leia Ben is such a wonderfully strong character, and it is great to see her offset by her brother Brock, who has a lot of deeper things going on around his whole backstory, along with Dehu, who I think was the strongest character in this story, whose arc was probably the biggest from beginning to end. Just seeing these three characters come together and form a team was so well done that by the end, I was heartbroken and in awe of several things that happened within this story. And I also enjoyed seeing all of the different perspectives. Each chapter switched between the three different characters and you definitely felt and saw that shift. The way they were written, they didn't feel the same, which is great to see when you're switching characters like that. Now this book does have a conclusion, but it also has a couple of cliffhangers, which I am very interested in seeing in which directions they go. Like I said, I was heartbroken. I was excited. There were so many different emotions that I was feeling by the time I got to the end of this book that I need to get my hands on the next book, like now. So you will probably be seeing me read more of this series because I am now addicted. I'm probably also going to go back and read Blackthorn and Grimm. I have been slowly collecting Juliette Merlin's books. I believe I have the first book in that series and I'll probably go and pick up the rest of that trilogy as well because I need to know about the generation before these kids and just see how some of the other series may be interwoven in that story, especially since I'm kind of seeing it in this one right here. I got excited when I saw possible references to the Seven Water series, which is by far one of my favorite fantasy series. So seeing nods to that really made my heart happy. If you enjoy Juliette Merlier, any of her writing, if you enjoy fantasy, if you just enjoy reading books about warrior people and people who go on special missions and are spies and all kinds of those fun different stuff, I highly recommend this book. I enjoyed it. And of course, this is the point in my review in which I'm going to switch over to some spoiled filled thoughts. So if you don't want to spoil yourself, now would be the time to go read the book because 
you definitely need to read the book. Tell me down below if you are going to do that because I need to talk to people about this book. I'm not sure why I hadn't picked up this book before now, but I'm definitely glad that I did. And then come back and this is now things that are just gonna pop out of my mouth randomly because this is the point in my review where there's absolutely zero structure and I'm okay with that. I don't know how I do this every single time. Pick up a book and realize that it's actually in the middle of a world and there's a series or so ahead of it or there are books ahead of it. I just do it. I'm very, very, very good at doing that. And the fact that I didn't realize that until I was about 50 pages into the book, I'm like, something feels a little, a little different about this book. And I think I'm picking up references to Seven Waters and I know I've heard a title Wolfskin somewhere in Juliet Merlier's writing. I need to look some things up. And of course, discovering that it is the next generation of Blackthorn and Grimm. I now need to know these kids' parents' backstory. And I'm pretty sure, tell me if you guys think this too, because Swan Island immediately made me think of Seven Waters and the Isle with my beautifully painted warriors. And then the fact that later we were referencing that the Swan Island warriors used to have tattoos of animals. They used to become the animals and have names of those animals. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is all within that same universe. I mean, I have, I have not found anything that for sure confirms all of this, and maybe I'm just building all of this up in my head, but I'm pretty sure that this is all started with Seven Waters and we're slowly going through history. Or am I crazy? It's totally possible that I'm crazy, but I do really, really, really like Leoben and Dayu, or Dayu. I'm never gonna get that name right. I want to see where their, their little connection goes. I do have an art copy of the next book, which is actually what uh, made me read this book because I requested that book before realizing it was a second book and a series. Like I said, I just pick up books without realizing they're part of other things. So I do have an art copy of that. I will be reading that very quickly. You will have another review for me because I need to know what happens to these characters because I am invested in their future. I am hoping it goes the direction I want because Leoben and Deyu are the cutest thing ever. And the fact that Brock decided that he was just gonna say goodbye to everybody without like a real goodbye is heartbreaking. And I need some kind of conclusion with all of that. I mean, I go find love, be that thing, but the, just how final that was when he left, I was almost in tears. So I need to know what happens to these people. I need to know Juliet Morlier has once again captured me, torn out my heart, put it into pieces, put it back together, and ah, just, just words, just, just all the words. I'm assuming if you've gotten this far in the video, you've either read the book or you just like to see me flail. Either one is fine. Tell me down below your thoughts on this book in this series. I think I'm gonna have to slowly go through all of Juliet Morlier's works and just read everything, review everything, get my thoughts in order and up on this channel in some way or form so that I can go back in the future and just see what I thought. I think it's a good idea. So if you would like to see that journey of me going through all of Juliet Merlier's works, subscribe down below. And of course, I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.